I am between Exeter and Plymouth on Brunel South Devon Railway. And it's along this section of the track that he laid the atmospheric railway. It was a pipe, the atmospheric caper it was so called. And the story begins here. In September 1844, Brunel with his locomotive designer, Daniel Gooch and the <laughs> members of the railway board went to see the atmospheric railway in operation in Ireland between Kingstown and Dalkey. The atmospheric railway <coughs> really impressed Brunel. <coughs> what <coughs> the difference was this, the locomotive was replaced by a platform and underneath the platform was a pipe that pierced this slot of a 15 inch diameter tube and in that tube was a leather valve that caused the air in front of the pipe to be sucked out by a pumping station and that meant that the air pressure behind the valve could drive the train forward because the South Devon Railway would be traversing very steep gradients Brunel could see that the train could maintain a higher speed going up steep slopes such as 30 miles an hour which would be impossible using locomotives. So he had built along this section of track between Exeter and Totnes pumping stations every three miles but unlike the stations of the locomotives he did not have telegraph connection so you had to have a runner leaving the station when the train was being put into gear to leave to tell the pump station to start burning coal to create the steam to create the vacuum. <clears throat> Excessive coal was often used. Now between Exeter and Tynmouth the 30th of May 1846 the locomotives used this part of the track which had just been opened but the atmospheric train appeared the following year on the 13th of September 1847. The train was fast and silent and speeds up to 68 miles an hour were achieved by a train being lighter. You didn't have the heavy locomotives climbing gradients. And there was no soot and atmospheric discomfort for passengers. But the system was going to be a failure. The leather flap in the pipe would freeze. It was very difficult to keep it supple. And to keep costs down, there was just one track. And this meant you're going to have delays. For the 20 miles between Exeter and Newton Abbott, it took 55 minutes because you had to wait for oncoming trains and also the train had to be have its piston engaged into the slot once the train was jerked out of the stations to break inertia, sometimes horses were used. It was a disaster in the respect that it cost nine times to build this stretch of railway according to the estimates that Brunel had put down and it was three shillings and a penny per mile to operate compared to one shilling and fourpence for the locomotives and 40 miles of track had been built. Brunel had tremendous self-confidence. He was not an inventor like his father, but what Brunel did, he analysed embryonic inventions and he believed, and he often was right, that he could improve upon the initial design. 
and he spotted the weaknesses of the atmospheric railway but he had tremendous confidence that he could improve upon its design and he ignored possible failure and the cost of this failure cost the railway company a staggering £350,000. His peer Robert Stevenson had looked at the atmospheric railway and he was able to come to the conclusion that it wasn't worth pursuing but Brunel was blind to its failures because he had so much confidence. The atmospheric railway was abandoned on the 10th of September 1848. It dented Brunel's reputation but the strength of his reputation and what he had achieved had convinced the railway companies to continue employing him albeit he did volunteer to only be, tain, to be paid a retaining fee to help compensate for the financial disaster. And in this view you can see what we're left with. This is the pumping station at Star Cross. This is the heart of Brunel's atmospheric railway. The design that Brunel had sketched with pencil shows that there was an extended top of this tower and you can see if you look under the tiles there is still the Italianate design of architecture. The building is extremely strong and no expense was spared in building a quality station. And there are other stations, there's one at Exeter and the one at Totnes remains and that was never used because the atmospheric railway didn't reach that far. This was the atmospheric caper but Brunel's reputation guarded against the permanent damage to his reputation because he was to go on to produce bigger and more monumental achievements. This is Michael Turner at Star Cross, the heart of Brunel's atmospheric railway on the picturesque west bank of the River X in South Devon. And there's no more beautiful stretch of railway in this country than the Great Western Lines running along the west bank of the River X and along the coast towards Dawlish. Brunel's work remains along with the disappointment of his atmospheric system. But the atmospheric railway forms a unique part of English heritage and yet was one of the very biggest mistakes that the development of the railways had included. I hope this video inspires you to visit Starcross and to read a Brunel biography.